Hi. <laughs> It's Erlinda Vo, the energy alchemist, and you are joining us today on the Get Rich Book Club. Woohoo! What is the Get Rich Book Club, James? Uh, I mean, it's just it's two really cool people talking about a book and a club and getting rich. You know. <laughs> That's what happens when you put them on, on the spot. So you guys, Get Rich Book Club is really, it really is about two cool people having a conversation about, you know, uh, looking at a certain book. Right now we're doing You Are a Badass with Jen Sincero. Um, Badass at Making Money with Jen Sincero. Yes, that book. And um, we are excited to be here because we are almost close to finishing this book. So there's been lots of people. Hi. Yes, hello to all the cool people on this beautiful Sunday. Um, it, we are close to finishing these books. Some of you have already finished. Some of you are behind. Some of you have never even bought the book. I recommend you get the book and do the assignments. It's amazing and life-changing. I know for James and myself, it's definitely, definitely life-changing. Um, so I want to just remind you of the intention of the Get Rich Book Club. And the Get Rich Book Club is really about aligning your energy with what you are creating for your income, wealth, and abundance. Um, James and I were talking earlier and really this get rich book club is like getting rich isn't just about finances. It's just not, it's not only about money. It's like having rich, fulfilled relationships It's having a rich and healthy lifestyle. Right? So I just want to bring that to your attention because sometimes we think get rich. It's like, Oh my God, let's go get money. And like, it's all about money, 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 money. Now I'm not saying it's not all about money, 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 but it's also including an all encompassing like your whole life. Like how do you create your own life? Right. And have a rich and fulfilled life. So welcome, welcome. For those of you who are joining us, it's Erlinda Vo, the Energy Alchemist. And I just want to go over a few logistics before uh, James introduces himself. Um, don't forget to like my fan page, which if you're seeing this, you're watching us on my fan page. So just don't forget to like it. Um, where we go live each week uh, for the Get Rich Book Club. Uh, just a reminder, next week is Mother's Day, so we will be skipping next week. Um, go be with your moms or, you know, whatever you do for, like, dinners or lunches or whatever. Just honor the special person in your life um, that represents a mother or is a mother for you, whatever it is, okay? And really enjoy that next Sunday off. Um, another thing is, is if you want to join our Get Rich Book Club group, just go ahead and make the request. That's where we share a little bit more and talk a little bit more and just become a part of our community. If you want to get the text messaging money mantras, which you just text GRBC to 33222. Okay. Whew. Now that we got the logistics, now I can be all happy and excited out. <laughs> It's Sir Linda Bo, the Energy Alchemist, and today's chapter 11 from You Are a Badass at Making Money by Jen Sincero. Yes, chapter 11. We are so close to the end. I hope you've produced results that you were unexpected and out of ordinary because I know James and myself, we have. Um, this chapter is called Your Inner Wealth. Um, before James starts, I just want to say one little, oh, James, introduce yourself and then I'll say it. Okay, go. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is James Van Hoffwagen. I'm a realtor here in Chicago and I help people fulfill their dreams through real estate. Yes. And James sent me a text message last week. Last week I was, um, I was kind of struggling a little bit and actually I don't even remember what I was struggling with. Um, it doesn't matter. James sends me a text message and he says, read chapter 11 now. <laughs> and I'm like, like right now, like, can it wait? I mean, I'm going to be rereading the chapter shortly to do the agenda. Right. And, and, um, he was like, no, read it now, you know, because if you saw my video two weeks ago, there was a point in which I got moved. And I don't know if you guys saw, but there was a point in which I was reading the agenda and it was like, oh yeah, this is an agenda and I'm causing it and reading it. And I like got moved and it was something like just you be you, be a bold leader and you do you. Okay. And I was like, oh my God, like I could do me. Like I could do me and do the best me I can do, right? And I felt like 
on one hand, I was so lit up by that. Like, oh my God, I get to be me. But then I was like, oh my God, like, <laughs> I don't want to be me, right? Like there was a whole world that kind of came up because there might be people who don't like me. And in fact, um, you know, I've had some people unfriend me and <laughs> and unlike me, right? And, uh, or not unlike, I guess it's just unfriending nowadays. But uh, for example, like on Instagram, I've had people not follow me and like, just all these emotions were coming up. I was like, but if I'm going to be the best me and be me and do me right, then there's going to be people who don't like me or like they're going to have judgments. And, and I don't know where you guys are on this scale, but it was kind of really hitting me about two weeks ago. And, and when James sent that text and it was like your inner wealth, I was like, Oh God. Right. <laughs> but we're going to get to that in a minute. So I just wanted to give that story just as a context, because wherever you are, Okay, you might be fully 100% owning who you are and like out there and like, you know, like just raising your flag and doing your thing, right? Or you might be like me, just starting to step out and discover who you really are, right? Um, or like Sarah too, right? Like discovering like, what do I wanna do with my life? Like wherever you are is fine. And, and this chapter is all about your inner wealth. So we're gonna get to that in a minute, but before we get there, I wanna just recap a couple things from last week, okay? So last week, um, hi, you guys. Sorry, I'm kind of just talking and I forget, like we have people, hi. <laughs> Um, we are taught that if we keep working harder, somehow the money will come. When we focus on the money, instead of working ourselves to death, we open the door to new freedoms. Interesting. The one thing that holds people back is resisting change. Ah! James and I could probably have a whole conversation about resisting change. Anything you want to say about that, James? Seriously? Resisting change? Yeah, I've been resisting it all weekend, <laughs> all weekend, and you guys, it's been painful, painful. Yeah, like how does it make you feel, seriously, like when you're resisting something, either resisting doing something, resisting someone, resisting a communication, resisting, 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 like what is, like for you, James, what is your experience, or anybody on, what is your experience of that resistance? Well, if it, if it adds, I feel sad, right? I feel sad or I'll feel angry, right? So the, the, the initial emotion is, is anger. And yesterday it was rage. Like I was just in a rage. And, um, but, but I, like I've, I know myself well enough to know that underneath that anger and underneath that rage is, is like a, a, an emotional pain. And, um, yeah, and, and, and then it, like, it, I've, I've felt almost nauseous all weekend, like. like Probably, just, like, heavy. Heavy, and... have, like, a pit in my stomach. I just want to, like, hide under the covers yeah. and eat ice cream all the time. <laughs> yes! It's not only <laughs> me. This is so exciting. <laughs> I'm yeah. just joking about that, James, but no, but really like that's the number one thing that holds people back is resisting change, even good change. Cause James, you know, by the way, James, you know, two weeks ago, let me just tell you two weeks ago, James and I are clearing before and he, he's like, whoa, is me and life is like this. I don't know yeah. if you have people in your life like this, right? So James, James, James knows a little bit better than this. So he, he you know, he doesn't do it as dramatic anymore because we vibe him <laughs> up, right? But it's a little bit like, woe is me. And then at the end of the call, we debrief for like just a few minutes. And he's like, oh, and by the way, I got this amount of money and I got this amount of money and I got this percentage increase and I got this. And I was like, um, excuse me, way to bury the lead there. <laughs> like, <laughs> So you guys, even when the change, like you're laughing, right? But when the change is good, no, I, this is actually, I'm, I'm sorry. I have to stop joking about this for a second because even when the change is good, we resist it. And, you know, James, and I'm work. I'm going to pick on you a little bit just because you're here and you can talk to me, <laughs> but I'm going to pick on you a little bit because we're so used to relating to other people. 
and how we relate to other people because most people aren't up there like, oh, I got a windfall. You know, like if I walked up to my some of my friends and be like, I got a windfall of money, they'd be like, um, okay, you weirdo, or like, like shut it down. Like, um, okay, let's just have our coffee and like do talk about like how woe is me and like you not believe what happened to me last week, okay? Right? Does that make sense? So, so it's like there's not an environment that's like, yay, go James, right? And so even in our conversation, he was, you know, dealing with stuff. Now it's appropriate, we were clearing. So it's like whatever's in the way, just say that, right? But we're not automatically out to like be like, yay, this is what happened. This is the great thing. So we resist change, bad change and good change. Okay. And that's what's holding us back. We rather limp around taped to our ratty, unhealthy relationships with money, afraid that if we peel back the layers, we won't be able to handle what we see underneath. Woo. That doesn't just apply to money. I was... James is took it right out of my mouth. It really doesn't that. I mean, when I was reading that out loud right now, like I was like, wow, relationships, right. Or my health. Like I rather stick around to my unhealthy relationships and conversations about my health. Afraid that if I look underneath, I won't be able to handle what's underneath. Right. And, um, or relationships, whatever it is for you. Um, and we rather walk around with just our unhealthy conversations and relationships and money. And by the way, I got some hundred dollar bills, yo. What? <laughs> it was so exciting. It was unexpected little windfall. So I'm going to acknowledge that. Um, so just to finish our recap, Jen says the very, very unfunny cosmic joke is in an attempt to protect ourselves from pain, we perpetuate behaviors that create the very pain we are trying to avoid. Okay. Thanks to our love of avoidance, the average person spends more time figuring out which is the perfect angle to take the hottest selfie. Oh, and if you're following my lipstick challenge, that's me for like... <laughs> than really what she wants to do for her life. Now, are we saying and making anything wrong about taking selfies? No, and I'm doing 100 days of bold lipstick. And let me just tell you, you know, it, it talks about figuring out what, sh what you really want in life and how much it would cost and how to increase the income. Like, there is something for me, and I'm just speaking about myself, it's like, it's coming and breaking out of my comfort zone, right? And right now I am that person, like, what's the best angle? I don't know. I just want to, you know, take this picture for this challenge that I'm doing, but really sitting down and, you know, I've updated my budget. I, I've, you know, paid off my credit cards. Um, I, you know, I got to travel to Prague. I've gotten windfalls. I've gotten two typhoons, windfalls of money, like all this great stuff. I have a team of people to, who are on call, ready to support me in my health journey. Like, like you guys, there is a lot of stuff here, but I didn't just think about, am I talking too loud and they're pounding? <laughs> uh, I didn't just think about like, what's the angle to take my bold lipstick I'm causing out of side of my comfort zone. Right. And how much is it going to cost to live the lifestyle that I want? Right. And how do I increase my income? Right. By acknowledging my current clients and appreciating them by expanding and making requests. So that was the recap from last week. I hope you guys enjoyed Sarah. We love Sarah. Um, and I just a special little thanks for her for doing that. So um, James, why don't you kick us off into this inner, your inner wealth? Yeah. So first of all, I didn't get to say this, but welcome back. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah did an amazing job and uh, I'm excited to have you back. She didn't have lipstick like I did. <laughs> I mean, she, she still rocked it. I know, I saw. I was like, yeah. dang. <laughs> good, good. So, yeah, so guys, we're going to dig in. Um, I just want to bring to your attention, like, I, well, how many weeks? It was like last week, right? I was, I sent you that text, or maybe the week before, and I was rereading this chapter after I've read this book how many times? And you guys, in the meantime, it's like, I have completely forgotten about this chapter and everything that it says because over the last like two, three days, 
you know, I've been I've been dealing with it, and everything that I've been dealing with is right in in these pages, right? So, um, at the risk of proselytizing or being preachy or on a soapbox, uh, there's some real genius in this book. Like, there's some real genius, and if if you just pay attention a little bit, if you if you go back and reference it, that's why I, I went and I bought the hard copy instead of just downloading the audiobook, I wanted to buy the hard copy for reference. So if, um, and I encourage you to do that. If, if you want something to go back and reference or get it on Kindle or however you do, but have that point of reference for yourself and go back and revisit it. Not just with this book, but, but we're going we're gonna to actually get into some other books in the future. And as we grow and as the book club evolves, uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna start getting into some really great stuff, and you're gonna want to you're gonna want to be able to go back and reference it. So that being said, um, you, you this this chapter is called your inner wealth, <clears throat> and the the focus is what's in you, right? You have unique and important gifts and talents inside of you, and you're meant to respect and nurture and strut your uniqueness as unapologetically as the late great prince strutted his. Now, does that mean like, you know, shirt off and guitar and all that stuff up on stage? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. It's whatever your Eunice is. Well, write, uh, down, write down below, like I am unapologetic for my Eunice or badasses or whatever, whatever, like I'm unapologetic for being me. Okay. <laughs> you know, um, I, I, thank you for saying that because uh, I've actually found myself saying, oftentimes, you guys, when when we get into a relationship or uh, any any kind of relationship, right? Whether it be romantic, whether it be um, a new job or or uh, a client advisor relationship. Um, hi, Megan. Thanks for your comment. Hi, um, Megan. You know, oftentimes people will try to limit whatever your self-expression is, right? And I've actually found myself saying, look, I am unapologetically unapologetic for wearing my heart on my sleeve. This is how I feel. And, or this is, like, this is what it is for me. And I'm just being straight with you. And if that's, you know, if you can't, handle that some way like like thank you for communicating your state about it but this is who I am yeah. Yeah. and I'm not sorry about it yeah. so sort yourself out and that's what I was dealing with two weeks ago was like I was feeling people's reactions to me being me like you know no one really understands what we're doing with this book club James and I don't even know if we really do but I know we're making some magic and miracles happen right and um, so I'm like, oh, my God, like being me, like I was starting to feel like apologizing for being me. Right. Like, um, oh, my God, who wants to see me do this bold lipstick challenge? Like, apolo like and, and it's like this. Apolo like I just naturally am like apologetic for like even existing. Right. And um, and when I re when James Tiff, he's like, read the chapter now. And I was like, OK. <laughs> right. And he talks That's about exactly Prince. how I said it, too. Yeah, I exactly. That's I was like, read the chapter now. <laughs> well, his, his voice and communication got clearly through. Really? <laughs> go ahead, James. Sorry to interrupt you. But yes, go ahead and write down below, you guys. I am unapologetic for being me. Yep, exactly. So, um, so yeah, getting rich and succeeding and making your dreams in reality, uh, making your dreams a reality depends on who you're being, mm. right? It depends on how you're thinking, how you're speaking, how you're, what you believe, how you believe what you believe, what you're imagining, how you stretch yourself. Uh, it depends a lot on how you're perceiving your world around you and your environment. All of those things affect how you act and how you interact with the world around you and with the people around you and with the energy, right? The, the energy, the currency, the money that is surrounding you, right? So let's dive into this a little bit. Uh, 
we grow. God, this, this is poignant for me right now. It always works that way, James. Haven't you noticed? It's yes. always the chapters as I'm writing the agendas and I'm, I'm like delegating who gets to say what. And then James comes on before and he just has this issue and dealing with something. And then he gets to read about it in the agenda. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> So the way we grow and learn is through friction, right? Uh, friction within ourselves primarily, right? Because our external reality is our external reality. For instance, if you're in Chicago right now, it's blue skies and it's about 60 degrees, okay? So if you are cold at 60 degrees, you're going to put on more clothes. If you're hot, you're going to put on less clothes, right? Uh, but if you just are a person who inherently like has a, a doesn't like the sun, if you're a vampire, right? That's a friction within you. That has well, anyway, you, you get my point. That's not exactly accurate, but you get my point. I'll move on. Uh, so we 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 learn well, the growth. The point, James, is is that the friction you're dealing with is so that you can learn and grow. Right. You know, because yes. you were saying, like, I don't want any more friction. Why can't it just be easy? Like, you know, but really, if we had the easy, it wouldn't. we wouldn't get to experience the friction, right? And if we don't get the friction, we don't get to experience the good, right? The right. contrast of that. Okay, go ahead. And actually, I was listening to a song yesterday on the treadmill by uh, Lupe Fiasco, a local Chicago rapper. And... Uh, said, I'm not a facade cherisher, I'd rather have the scars. And that kind of got me right here. I don't know um, what that means at all, but I trust that that's a, what, exactly what we, it meant. Well, Never mind. The facade, right? Okay, okay. I'd rather have the scars. Oh. Not a facade okay. cherisher, I'd rather have the scars. Okay, got it. Friction. Friction, okay. Um, so uh, oftentimes it's the friction within ourselves, right? And Abraham Hicks, who is someone that you can uh, go Google, uh, talks about contrast a lot, right? Um, and your job, your job in life is, is not to rid yourself of the discomfort. It really isn't, because you can do whatever you can, right? Many people take to drugs, alcohol, whatever it is, to rid themselves of the discomfort. Uh, but guys, that's never going away, right? Not if, you're, not if you are committed to growth. If you're committed to growth, you are committing to discomfort and committing to friction and committing to constantly stretching and expanding yourselves. Um, so your job is really to master the art of, re of responding and being response-able, right? Said another way, responsible. Uh, so not just responsible for whatever uh, the consequence is, good or bad, but responsible for and aware of your thoughts and your actions. How many yeah. times do you have like a reaction, right? And you're not even mm -hmm. aware that you're reacting, right? <laughs> You, you're not even aware of your thoughts and actions like you're, you're just reacting to something, right? So your job really is just to shortcut your instincts to react. That's playing out the same old tired, low frequency patterns you've been lugging around your whole life. <laughs> so if you can notice the starting to react, right, and short circuit that, right, otherwise you'll play the same tape over and over again. You are a valuable, irreplaceable asset to the universe. You are mighty beyond comprehension. You are a badass. So just a quick reminder, money is currency. And currency is energy. When your energy is vibrating at the highest frequency possible, you are like a tornado of awesomeness. One of the highest frequencies is the frequency of the emotion of love. So if you guys think about it, everything is energy. 
Okay. And there's this subtle bioenergy that flows through life. So I'm just going to go a little bit on the Erlinda side over here. Okay. There's this subtle bioenergy that flows through life. Some people call it life force. Some people call it chi. This bioenergy has a vibration to it and it can be measured. It is expressed as an electromagnetic vibrational frequency. And so everything has a frequency. Emotions have frequencies and so do thoughts. The difference lies in the varying levels of frequencies. Those with consciousness, such as us human beings, experience higher energy frequency states. But not all of us human beings vibrate at the same levels. So at, we don't always vibrate at optimum energy levels and energy frequencies as well, right? So if we're, we're talking about money is currency and currency is energy, right? And when you're vibrating at the highest frequency, you are like a tornado of awesomeness, right? But sometimes we don't always vibrate at an all, all, our optimum frequency, energy frequency, right? One of the main reasons is because we allow our negative emotions and limiting thoughts to be in charge. It happens when we are easily affected by what other people say ah, and what we put ourselves down by and unhelpful beliefs. So it's been reported that negative thoughts lower your frequency by 12 megahertz when positive thoughts raise our frequency by 10 megahertz. So you know how I always talk about this is the gym? This is what we're doing. We're interrupting those negative thoughts, right? You know, James has to cause himself to be present and not deal with that, like, so upset from the friction, okay? So I'm still on the Erlinda sidetrack, okay? Um, another reason why we, we you know, because this is important, because this is about how do you integrate this into your frequency and into your energy, right? Um, another reason why our, our frequency is lower is we take on an unhealthy lifestyle, right? Um, so the greater that the movement within ourselves, the more free our body is to, to self-heal. Um, sorry, I'm just kind of going through this a second. Hold on. When we become out of balance excessively and over prolonged periods of time, our body's natural ability to heal itself declines. We are not able to operate optimally. Consequently, we find that we are not in the best state to attract abundance and live the life we desire. So why am I bringing this up? Because one of the things that I think and one of the tools that I use in my practice is essential oils. And essential oils have the highest frequencies of any measured natural substance. They range anywhere between 52 megahertz to 580 megahertz. So just to give you a sense, a healthy body from head to foot typically has a frequency ranging from 62 to 78 megahertz, while disease begins at 57 megahertz. Okay, so let's just talk about the negative thoughts, right? 12, they're a negative 12 megahertz, right? So they decrease your frequency by negative 12. So imagine having, like dealing with that alone. Let's just talk a little, like how many negative thoughts do you think you have a day? millions right so in all this every day we're having these negative thoughts and they're bringing our frequency down and let's say we have an unhealthy lifestyle we're eating processed and crappy foods our our frequency is going down and down and down my opinion oils are the fastest way to increase your frequency okay so jen talks about to get in tune and increase your frequency and she gives us some of these things on how to do this to to really um, increase your frequency, like the best way to get in tune, right? And, um, but before we get into what Jen says, I just want to finish by that, um, by applying an essential oil, you can restore your body back to its original natural harmonic resonance. Okay, so for example, lavender in your book club kit vibrates at the level of 118 megahertz. Lavender, that's one oil, okay? Like, just put some lavender on. It's all good. <laughs> or peppermint vibrates at the 78 megahertz, right? So if you think about it, with the negative thoughts and the lifestyles and all these things, our frequency just goes down and down and down. And essential oils are one of the fastest ways, in my opinion, to increase your frequency so that you can actually start to look at life differently. Because when you're vibrating at a low frequency, you start to, like, see the world through a different lens, right? So let's go into, James, why don't you take us into what 
the whole point of this is really so that you can, um, sorry, I'm going to read it again, that money is currency and currency is energy. And when your energy is vibrating at the highest frequency possible, you are like a tornado of awesomeness. Okay. So aside from essential oils, Jen talks about some ways to get in tune. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. So real quick, if I had some lavender, which I happen to do, which I happen to have, uh, where would I put it? Oh, well, James, I'm so glad you asked. For you right now, I'm going to say the throat. It is the, it's the oil of communication as well. So the throat's a really good thing. So if you're dealing and you're out there, you're like, I'm not sure, but I know lavender is a high frequency. Like, listen, you can put it on your wrist and just smell it. Just have it go into the brain, right? Um, it, it helps to increase the frequency. So immediately you can put some on your throat or you can put some on your wrist and just go ahead and smell it. And it will help alter the, the frequency, okay? Um, thanks okay. for asking that. This is a very smart, good question. Yeah, I, yeah, I actually I have some and I'm going to put some on after we're done. Perfect. And you can put some peppermint right on your chest, too. It'll be fine. I don't know if I have peppermint. but Oh, then breathe. Okay. I have, I, I'm wearing that right now. Oh, good. Look at that. By the way, I have to let you know, um, for any skeptics out there, especially men that are watching, um, I, was, I, I was complimented twice this week on my fragrance. Uh, and, like, not just complimented, but stopped and said, excuse me, what are you wearing? <laughs> and I, I, I said, well, I'm, like, I'm not wearing a, a, a cologne, if that's what you're asking. They kind of looked at me funny, and I said, I'm, I'm wearing some essential oils. And they're like, really? I said, yeah. Go, you smell really good. And I, I thanked them, and I said, you know, is it too much? And they're like, no, 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 it smells really good. So, uh, so you for you guys out there. helping to vibe them up also, James. I, well, goodness, <laughs> I hope so. So, uh, so yeah, so just for you skeptics out there, um, get yourself some oil. So, um, anyway, getting in tune is what we're talking about, right? So getting in tune with our frequencies to channel our inner wealth, uh, right? One of, the, one of the key ways aside from the essential oils and what Jen talks about in the book is I have my book over here, which is why I pointed over here, um, is meditation, right? So you're an energetic creature, just as Erlinda was talking about and connecting to universal intelligence is in infinitely empowering because uh, that bond strengthens your connection to your true self. And I don't know if you guys have ever meditated or meditated before reading this book or have meditated since reading this book, but I hadn't meditated at all prior to reading this book. And then I started meditating and then stuff started shifting. Mm -hmm. And then I stopped for a little period and stuff started shifting in a different way. <laughs> and then I started meditating again <laughs> and stuff shifted back toward the way that I wanted it to go. So, uh, my opinion, meditation works. Uh, <clears throat> meditation allows you to emotionally connect to the truth that you are and that you are an infinitely powerful spirit energy and that your reality goes far beyond where your five senses tell you. Um, The objective is to, is to quiet your mind to the point of thoughtlessness, and it does take practice. Now, I want to go back to what I just said for a brief minute. Um, connects you to the truth that you are an infinitely powerful spirit energy, and that your reality goes far beyond what your five senses tell you. If you've ever had a gut feeling, Uh, or if, if you've had a sense about someone far away, say a, a relative or whatever, and then you pick up the phone and you call them and find out that they were thinking about you too, that's what that is. Um, trust your gut. Trust that inner feeling about 
whatever that is. Uh, and the more you meditate, the more attuned you're going to become. Um, I've tried to suppress that. I, I just choked up Erlinda there. She see how powerful that that stuff is. But I I've I've learned that suppressing that feeling or discounting that feeling or that intuition, whatever it is, doesn't work. It just doesn't work. So meditate, get in tune with that. And there's lots uh, of ways to do that. There's walking meditations. There's, you know, all kind. yoga can be a practice, a form of meditation. Like, so just go out there, do some research, find a way in which you can start to like, like quiet your mind. Right. And, and really connect to that infinitely powerful spirit energy. Right. That goes far beyond the reality of your five senses. So really there's lots of ways to do it. Find one that works for you and practice and try different ones. Yeah. All right. Another way is through affirmations, right? What you tell yourself and what you tell yourself on a regular basis is really important. Um, uh, what was that one movie, Erlinda? Uh, is what the bleep do we know? Something about that. So something like that where they studied uh, the effect of water molecules, like, uh, verbal communication on water molecules. Is that what it was? Frozen. Yeah, they they wrote like it's Dr. Marasudo Moto, I believe. Don't quote me on that. Um, but they wrote um, words like loving words and froze the crystals. And there was beautiful crystals on the words that were written um, that were positive. And there was like really messed up ones that were were the negatives, right? And um, and so one of the things she does in that movie is kind of write on herself, right? Loving thoughts and stuff. So affirmations are a great way to start to, to impact your subconscious. Um, so yeah, it's very important what you're telling yourself on a regular yeah. basis. Especially guys, our bodies are comprised of about 60 to 70% water. So if you think about that on a, on a molecular level and how it impacts your entire body, your skin, right, your eyes, everything, it's important what you tell yourself. Uh, pay attention to what falls out of your mouth and what pops into your mind during meditation. Um, if it's negative, go ahead and rewrite it. Write it for yourself. You are in charge of what goes through your mind, okay? Uh, Rewrite it with new words and thoughts that transmit a positive feeling and say these words, these new words over and over and over and over until they sink in and they become habitual. Yeah. I want to, I want to put a little caveat for affirmations because sometimes we feel like, um, like this is how an affirmation goes. I love money because I love myself. And my brain says, yeah, no, you don't love yourself. And there's like this little response in the brain, right? So when we're talking about affirmations and what she, what James just described is if you're walking around like, I love money because I love myself and that's the affirmation. But right after it, you have a whole conversation that's negative, right? Like you, that, that affirmation does nothing for you. So it's really taking apart and, and untangling that negative um, affirmation or negative thoughts that are coming right after the affirmations. Okay. So if you do this, you guys, affirmations take some work, right? Until you're at the point where you can have an affirmation and not have anything arise out of it, if that makes sense. Did that communicate, James? It totally did, yeah. yeah. It's like the it's like having the money stashed around your house, right? I had someone over uh, yesterday, and they said, why do you have all these $100 bills all over the place? And we had a whole conversation about it, and what they got to was, well, but they're supposed to be in your wallet. I go, well, why are they supposed to be there? Well, because that's where they go and that's where the money goes. And like, that's, you have to take care of it. I'm like, yeah, I got it. And what if money was just everywhere around you? And the person like short circuited a little bit <laughs> and then it, it sunk in and it was kind of, it was kind of cool to, so, right. So it's, it's like that. It's like that, except with your own self-talk, with your own words and thoughts and, and uh, what you say about yourself. Yeah, so it's not just a pretense. It's not just like a fake it to you. Like, it's like literally, like, 
If you're saying rearranging yeah. your molecules. Yes, exactly. Like that person came into your environment, which Jensen Chero, I think we talked about environment before, but came into your environment and her mole or he or her <laughs> You didn't clarify what the molecules got started to get rearranged and it was uncomfortable, right? It was like, uh, why this should be in the wallet because that's their limiting belief, right? Like, right. and how many hundred bills, hundred dollar bills can you only carry in a wallet? I mean, right. You have to have it somewhere else too sometimes. So, so my point is, is like using affirmations is great, but not if you're counter using it for against yourself. Okay. Right. So just do the mind work for that. Okay. Good. Go. Yep. 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 Also, be nice. <laughs> Sorry, that was so funny. Go ahead. <laughs> be nice. This one's kind of tough for me, especially today. Like I yesterday, know. too. I was, you guys, I was in a rage yesterday. I found myself going 100 miles an hour down Lakeshore Drive, and I hope I don't get a ticket for that. But whatever. Like I was in a rage. Yeah. Be nice. I was not in a mood to be nice, uh, but and sometimes it takes an act of generating yourself nice, if mm -hmm. that makes any sense. Because um, what you put out it into the universe comes right back at you. Yep, I see you, karma. <laughs> yep. Uh, be patient. I really want to swear right now. Uh, I'm probably. I don't the, do this intentionally, James. Just so you know, I don't I do know. this intentionally. I okay, know. go ahead. I don't want to swear at you. I know. Um, I'm. I. I am probably. Well. Okay, so this is where I'm watching what comes out of my mouth. What I was about to say is that. I am probably one of the least patient people on the planet. And I'm not committed to that. So how do I rewrite that? Actively, right? So patience is something that I work on every day. Okay. And I'm getting better and better at it every day. And I'm getting better and better at being patient every day. And notice what came up after that, and then there's some more work to go. <laughs> you find yourself read, doing actually, this? Yeah, read the read read what Jensen Cheryl says because it might give you a different context, James. Where is it? Participating in patience is one of the best ways to love your oh, fabulous right. self. Yeah, participating yeah. in patience is one of the best ways to love your fabulous self. Hey, jagged little pill there. Yeah. Participating in patience is one of the best ways to love your fabulous self. Uh, our lives are made of tiny moments, and each moment you're making a choice that is either high or low energy. Each and every moment. <laughs> so... Shut up, slow down, breathe, connect to your higher self, and act with intention. Don't go 100 miles an hour down Lake Shore Drive. Be patient. Yeah, things take time. You know, we live in an environment which it's like the environment's like, oh, yeah, like, I want it now. But things take time. You know, relationships take time. You know, increasing your salary and money takes time. Like, things take time. It's not an overnight phenomenon. It took many years to build these really great, great messed up beliefs about money in my brain. <laughs> Right. It took years building that. And a lot of times we're very, um, I don't want to say stuck on it, but like we're like committed to it. Right. So really slow down, breathe, connect to your higher self and act with intention. And not only that, you guys you want to up your confidence. So we are all born confident. Some of us just get lost along the way. 
this is like so funny because this is so for what I need right now. <laughs> you guys, we, we are in this book club. I'll tell you that much. Um, yeah, confidence, like all other pieces of your mindset is a muscle, right? Some of the, her favorite, this is for Jensen Cheryl's favorite confidence boosters is body language, right? Like, and I don't know if you've ever seen that Amy Cuddy video on Ted talk where she's like, stand up or your power stance. Right. Um, but really just do it. Remember that you are already a big deal. Uh, I'm kind of a big deal. James, you're kind of a big deal. <laughs> and all you people watching, you're kind of a big deal. Like you're here in the gym on Sundays at four o'clock and in Chicago, it's nice out. So trust me, it means a lot to us and we know that, but you're in the gym right now. We're in the mindset gym for getting rich and altering our lives, okay? So remember that you are already a big deal and you had no confidence issues when you were younger. We just kind of lost it along the way sometimes, right? The next thing that she talks about is serve others. So the frequency of giving is right up there with the frequency of love. So we were talking about high frequencies, right? You know how James and I, at the end of our sessions, we always just throw some gratitude out there. Gratitude is such a high frequency as well. But serving others, giving, giving of your time, giving of your um, appreciation, acknowledgments, all of that stuff, like, and giving up your service and money and different things like that is it, it, it's just right up there with the high frequency of love. The high frequency energy that goes out when we give always comes back to us. Greed inspires more greed. If you want to be happy, make others happy. So serve others, you guys, it's a way to increase your frequency. And lighten up. <laughs> lighten up. Lighten up, James. Do you want me to do, you want me to do this one for you? <laughs> nope. Nope. You guys, why Erlyn is laughing is that I have a tendency sometimes, I had a tendency sometimes to be rather a bit of a wet blanket. Um, and... Uh, so, especially when I'm dealing with something, right? Like, oh, I'm so heavy and it's just so much. Oh my God. Woe is me. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so, like, no. Um, I actually had a couple of good friends of mine tell me that, like, you're so significant about this. Why did, like, come on, dude. Um, lighten up, get out of victim mode. Remember that everyone is just obsessed with themselves and their own feelings as you are with yours. So all of you guys out there are just as obsessed with your own feelings as I am with mine. And realize that I am just as obsessed with my own feelings as you are with yours. So lighten up, stop taking everything so personally. It's not about you. It's all, it's, like, whatever I say is probably not about you at all. It's all about me. Celebrate. <laughs> right? Celebrate. I had, oh, my God. I had the best juice yesterday. <laughs> I'm still, like, raving about this juice. It was so good and it was just what I wanted. It was like beet and carrot and green apple and ginger and it had so much ginger and it was, oh my God, it was so good. Um, and I found myself like, I was like, I took a sip of the I was like, wow, that's good. And then I took another sip and I was like, yes, this is some good juice. And like, and like I, every time I go back to think about how good this juice tastes, I'm just like, mm, that was some good juice. And I'm celebrating that because like that, that's 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 been one of the highlights of my weekend was that juice. Anyway, so celebrate appreciation appreciates badassery badassifies. That juice was badass. I want more? Um, and take the time to feel into and be grateful for, and do a cartwheel about all the greatness that you're bringing to the world. And you do that and you're gonna empower yourself to bring even more. So yeah, you guys, it was juice. It was juice. No big deal. But it was really good and I, 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 I wanted to 
revel in that good feeling. And I wanted to celebrate that and, and ride that upward spiral. And it totally worked. I had a great day yesterday after that juice. Also after the workout, which kind of helped to take the edge off the rage that I was in. Anyway, um, for uh, also, this also is you- celebrating. I want to I want to talk about that, you guys, yeah. because um, it is so easy to step over celebrating. Like you got a new contract, or you got a new check in the mail, or you got a new client, or you. I mean, there are so many things to celebrate, and we don't take the time to celebrate. I also found a juice I love this week too. It's amazing. I actually pretty much um, like went there three times in the last week. Oh. <laughs> so juice must be the thing right now. But appreciation appreciates. Okay. So the more you appreciate, the more appreciation you will feel. And like James, you're learning. And this is what I want for you guys too. You're learning. These are some techniques to increase your frequency, to get out of the state that you're in the whole hummery as she talks about, right? Ho hum, right? And when you're in, and when you alter your state and you celebrate, right? And you're being grateful for and about your greatness and what you're doing, whatever it is that you're bringing into the world, it's like, this, the feeling, you know, you hear my voice. Remember I was telling you how I do my little gratitudes. I'm like, I'm so grateful in the high pitch voice, right? Like you change the vibration of your body, your cells, right? And that's when you start to magnetize. And that's when you start to like, like bring more great juices into your life, right? And more great experiences into your life. So celebration is so important because, you know, it's, it's what, uh, it's access to something it like it opens something up. So you could be in your whole hummery every day, but when you find something, appreciate it. Right. And appreciate the people around you, you guys, like you might be the only thing that is lighting up their world right now. Like you have no idea what people are dealing with. So just a little appreciation to the waiter or your friend and just a little acknowledgement really goes a long way. It goes a long way. Long way. And I don't know about I don't know about you guys, but I, uh, especially from someone special to me, a little a little hey I'm thinking about you or whatever it is, and that just makes my day. It makes my day. Thanks. So I appreciate you oh. so much. No, I'm being serious. Like, you know, it's funny because um, you've really transformed. And, you know, for people who watch us every week, they might not know kind of that big, huge transformation, but I do know. And I celebrate you because I know you're here doing the mindset work at the gym here with me every week. And you've actually been on all 11 weeks. You know that, right? One time by myself. I know. So I'm acknowledging you and I celebrate you. Thank you. Oh, shucks. (laughs) So, um, okay, so now that I'm all, like, gooey inside, um, (laughs) but so that, thank you, that, thank you. Yeah. Where are we? I don't even know. Forgive. Uh, Forgive. Forgive. Okay. (laughs) So, forgive. Uh, Forgiveness is divine, right? We've all heard that one, but uh, the past ain't going to change itself anytime soon. And, uh, uh, you know, imperfect, Jen put it in the book, and I had never seen this until I read this, but imperfect equals I'm perfect. Right? We're all human. I'm human. You're human. At least I think you are. Uh, right? So you're going you're gonna to screw something up. I'm going to screw something up. I have screwed up a lot of stuff, you guys. I have screwed. I have screwed up so much stuff that I, at one point, was contemplating writing a book. How I managed to screw up so bad and still come out okay. Don't steal that book title. <laughs> oh, it's, not the FP, it's mine. Mine. All right. So look, you guys. Everybody's going to screw up. Your husband, your wife, your daughter, your son, your mother, your father, they're all going to screw up. You're going to screw up. You've already done it. 
gazillions of times. Forgive it. Let it go. Let it go. That goes with lighten up. Um, and remember, compassion is the key to forgiveness. Okay, we act like jerks. And, God, this really resonates with me. Uh, we act like jerks because we're in pain and fear, not because we're out to ruin the world. I act like a jerk because I am hurting and afraid. And my immediate instinct is to ruin everything. You're going to make me cry. That's me. That's my story, you guys. I'm not, but, and I, when it comes right down to it, I gotta, I, I can choose to either forgive myself or not. And nine times out of 10, I am the most difficult person for myself to forgive. It's hard to said another way. It's, it, I find it most difficult to forgive myself. So, uh, everyone's an asshole and everyone's awesome. We're all, all of it. So have a little compassion for yourself and for everyone else. So, and remember you guys, self-love means doing things that make you feel good. So if something makes you feel good is getting outside and going for a walk today, go do that. If it means having a, some a kick-ass juice, Go have a kick-ass juice, right? Or if it means reading a book or whatever, right? Do that. Be, become more aware of what makes you feel good and go do it. Go do it. Love yourself. People, like, this is a hard concept, and I've been dealing with this um, conversation of self-love, self-care. And um, when I read this, I was like, oh, if self-love means doing things that make me feel good, that's kind of simple. But in theory, right? <laughs> in theory. But it's like, oh, but I don't want to hurt this person's feeling because I want to go get my juice and they want to go there. Like, right? That's where it starts to get all wacky. But self-love, it really is that simple. It just means doing things that make you feel good. So if something doesn't make you feel good, don't do it. Be aware of what makes you feel good and go do it. Go do it. Go do bold lipstick if you want. Hello. Right? Go do or a walk on the beach. Whatever. Yeah, by all means, walk on the beach. I'm a strong proponent of that. Also, um, if being with someone or doing something makes you feel bad, don't do that. So you guys, we're, we're wrapping up right now. And um, again, we just, we have so much profound gratitude for the thousands of people that watch our, our video later on um, and all the people who watch our videos live, who get little tidbits and bring it into their lives. You know, we are here. We do this because we want to, because it, it impacts people's lives. Um, really, thank you for joining us. Thanks for taking time out of your Sunday to come be with us and be on this call in the mindset gym, right? That's what I call it, the mindset gym. Um, about getting rich, um, being rich in all areas of your life, relationships, money, health, all of it, okay? Um, the money mantra for the week is I love money because it lets me be the most I can be. So really be the be the awesomeness that you are. Just keep being the awesomeness that you are. And some people may not like it and some people may love it. But your job is to really be the awesomeness that you are. And really increase your frequency. Start to do some of these tips that Jen gave, some of the oils. Maybe do whatever you need to do to start to increase your frequency. Like now I know to bring up the juice for James when he starts to go, like his frequency starts to go down, right? <laughs> or say, James, put some lavender on, right? <laughs> like, yes. Oh, thank you, Anna. She just made my day. That was an, a, just a great, great compliment. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um See, you light someone's life up when you appreciate. And just thank you. That meant the world to me. Um, you guys, this has been tremendous. Now, people get a little wacky as we start to complete. We have two more chapters. 
And I want you to know that next week, because it's Mother's Day, we're not going to go live um, and we're going to skip a week. So what that means is come back in two weeks and join us for chapter 12, which is tenacity, I think. Right. I think it's tenacity. Um, so really, we're about wrapping up and people kind of get a little wacky about completion. OK, so wherever you are is fine, but come complete this book with us. We have another book picked out um, and we're going to start to start to talk about that book and start to work on that book on the back end. Um, so we're really, really excited because we really do believe this is a place and a space that people can grow and learn. And, you know, we take what the author provides as a context and we really Put our lives into it and we're sharing here authentically with you guys like there's moments when i want to cry moments when james wants to cry we like we are living and breathing this book club you guys um and it's working it's working i mean really we've had some tremendous tremendous results in our own lives and then people have also just let us know how tremendous the results have been in their own lives as well so there's something about this get rich book club that just is really sacred so I just want to thank everybody, um, James in particular, Sarah, who joined last week um, to host and all the team members in the background to put this together. And then all of you guys who watch us week weekly and, and who watch us later on and stuff. Um, uh, we will be getting a YouTube channel um, set up so that all the videos can be on there. I'm still working on the podcast and the advanced protocols. But literally, if you missed this whole series, start at Chapter 1. Okay, sign up on my website or lindavo.com and, and you can sign up for the workbooks. You'll get a workbook and and all of that stuff and watch the videos. It's pretty extraordinary to go through the process um, of this book with these videos. And why are you laughing, James? <laughs> I was just thinking about all the technical breakdowns and like the waves that we've, like everything that's happened behind the scenes uh, and like the roller coaster of it, you guys, we've been doing this for what, 12 weeks now? So three months. And the spaces that I've gone through and the, the things that, I was telling someone this morning, like, my life has accelerated beyond compare. It's just moving amazingly fast right now. And it's only been 12 weeks in, in three months. Yeah, so we've had was, tremendous yeah. results, but we've stayed on the roller coaster. We've been in the gym. We've been doing the assignments, you know, and, and bringing our heart and soul here. So... You guys put in whatever, you know, you're going to get what you put in, but really thanks for being here and we will see you in two weeks. Don't forget two weeks. Okay. Enjoy your mother's day and, um, and really, yeah, go, go do some meditation or go get some acknowledgement, go get some gratitude, go vibe up, go get some essential oils. You can visit my website for the book club sample kit. Um, yeah, all of it, you guys, it's amazing and extraordinary. So thank you for joining us on this journey and we send lots of love. Um, to you guys and have a great, great Sunday. Okay. And Thanks say so hi much. to your mother for me. <laughs> I couldn't uh, resist. <laughs> all right, you guys, thank you so much. Thanks for our regulars who have been on all the time each week with us. Just, I mean, just thank you. Cause without your listening out there, we wouldn't have anybody to speak into. So thank you so much. All right. Love you guys. Bye. Bye guys.